I think that might even be an understatement. I've been in a lot of courtrooms over the years, and I've never experienced anything like this. It was more like a soap opera, and I'll tell you what, I would not want to be in PG&E's hot seat. Not only is the state's largest utility broke, it's also in trouble with the law. The judge in charge of monitoring the power company's criminal probation following the San Bruno pipeline explosion says it violated that probation by not disclosing the full scope of its involvement in a 2017 Butte County fire. Judge Alsup said in no uncertain terms, quote, what can we do? Continue business as usual? Kill more people by starting more fires? End quote. That violation also allows Alsup to change the terms of PG&E's probation from the San Bruno explosion. And he told the utility those changes could be sweeping and they will certainly make every effort to avoid wildfire. He sent a loud message that he wants a solution. He wants people to collaborate on getting it right. And he wants to do it immediately. The judge has yet to specify what he will require the utility to do. It could be as far reaching as inspecting its entire grid, costing ratepayers extra, PGE says. But whatever it is, Judge Alsup says the June 21st official start of fire season is going to play a prominent role in his mandates. In the meantime, utility oversight groups want the maximum accountability possible, calling for the company to be put into receivership based on its past behavior. I am not convinced that the current management of PG&E, who has shown themselves incapable of following and complying with the basic safety rules, will be able to follow Judge Alsup's new rules. Now, PG&E did not speak after court. They did, however, send out a statement saying, essentially, look, we support the pursuit of safety, both in Northern and Central California, basically echoing, echoing what the judge said. What the judge is ultimately going to decide is going to come down to really one major issue, and that is their wildfire prevention plan. That is due next week per SB 901, which was passed last year. And the judge, in no uncertain, ter un uncertain terms, said, if this plan doesn't have enough teeth, if it doesn't show enough action, then I'm going to mandate it for you. Guys? And so, Emily, how will PG&E's bankruptcy filing play into this, affecting these federal orders? Yeah, that's a huge question. And we talked to some attorneys today who were actually involved in the first PG&E bankruptcy suit, and they said, that's a big question that no one can answer at this point, because, of course, PG&E filed at the 11th hour before this hearing today. Ultimately, what could happen is if the courts say you need to do X, Y, and Z, and it's too much of a big ticket item, PG&E in court could argue this is going to have to move into the creditor realm meaning we have to deal with this after bankruptcy. This is not going to be a priority. And then who knows where that all goes from there. Yeah, it's clearly still a lot to iron out here. All right, Emily Turner, live for us in mm -hmm. San Francisco. Thank you so much for